It's Roger once again, Mud Fossil University, coming to you from our wonderful round globe Earth. Speaking about globe Earth things. And today we're going to talk about Mars, which we see from our globe Earth. So if you don't have, live on the globe Earth, there's really nothing for you to watch here or comment on. Now, but if you do live on the same globe Earth that I do, what I'm going to explain to you is this is Mars, and what they see here they can't explain, and I can explain it quite easily. Now up here is my belt. <laughs> that is the back of a split leather belt. Now I'm going to focus in on this and adjust it and so forth so we can see a little closer, but what I'm going to show you here is what they see on the surface of Mars. Now, let's focus in on that a little closer. Now, you can see, you see these little balls down at the bottom just all by themselves? Well, what is going on here is there's all kinds of little fibrous straps, and I'll show you in the belt in a minute. And those fibrous straps have these little tiny balls at the end of all of these different places, and that is what invests your skin that this is skin. This is literally skin. And between the skin is the clay that is what it matrix, that's what they would call the substrate. And these are the fibrils that are in there. And I will show you the anatomical uh, drawings of them. But they all have these little tiny balls at the end of them. And that is what secures them. And you still, it's called areolar tissue. You flex and move around. But they anchor in in all these places. Now this is eroded from Mars. It only erodes in between and leaves the matrix of the connective tissue basically is what it is. Now if you look above here that is my belt. That is virtually the same thing. Now um, let's come in on a little better. Alright now this particular spot here is um, I put a little castor oil on here. Now I talk, to, I tell everybody about, I'm going to see if I brighten that up maybe a little bit. All right. But you can see there's all kind of fibers in there, which was the same kind of fibers on the other one. This is stretched and pulled and so forth. And that I put a little castor oil on. Now I'm going to walk it over to where there is no castor oil. You see how that's all this fibery stuff? Now I'm going to come out to where it leaves the castor oil and just goes into the dry fibers. Now, if this would, if the clay stuff eroded away from here and strictly left the connective tissue, you would end up with these crazy patterns like you see on Mars. And uh, that's the way it is. Now, I'm going to show you the. Uh, anatomical drawings of this. Here's another spot I put a little castor oil on way over in an area that's not stretched much. That's the way your skin works. It, 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 it's, it grabs and holds in, in these, these connective webs. That's all I can tell you. That's the way it works. Now, I'm going to show you the other stuff. All right, now once again from somewhere around the globe, uh, Martinique marbles they call them, something like that. These are the tendon enthesis balls that secure skin. The skin has eroded away and all of the straps which have what they call an abrupt transition. The strap here in most connective tissues, it, it, the strap itself is a little bit flexible. The stone ball is stone. All right, these are the different styles of um, tendon emphasis. and but they all have this stone ball structure in common which anchors into a, an, into a cup which is like what they call a tuberosity and these balls anchor into the cups and then they have these little straps holding them and then there's these kind that are just sit within the, the structure of the skin and so forth and, and um, the connective tissue runs out to tendon emphasis, I mean uh, tendons and ligaments and so forth. But there is thousands and thousands of these balls. And they're tiny in us, you, you, you don't even see them. But in these gigantic creatures they get big and they get extremely big. This earth is nothing more than a series of dead creatures that's been piled on top of one another. That's all I can say. 
That's what I'm seeing. You can see what you see, but that's what I'm seeing. And these are the abrupt transitions. These stems come down, they break at these abrupt transitions. Those little balls are held in place. And in, in the skin tissue, it, it lets it do all this stuff. Moving around, swishing around on your skin. If you didn't have that, it couldn't move. You, you wouldn't be flexible. So that's what that matrix does. And what they see on Mars, and it's an erosion of the clay substrate, which is the kaolin clays and the different um, molecules and, and so forth that service these tissues. And they suspend them in, the, you know, these, these, these layers of tissue. We call them skin and flesh and so forth. All right, anybody at all that's been following my work understands the layers of tissue and the layers of tissue are separated by layers of red, fleshy, bloody tissues that service those muscles. Now, this is the layers of the muscles. That didn't, that's not um, like just sediment layer, over layer, 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 layer. No, that is tissue, and the red stuff that's eroding away is the blood cells. This is Mars, and this is the red planet, and this is from the globe that I'm standing on, looking out into space where satellites are and all that stuff. And they send this back from the rover that is on Mars. And um, this is what they call the Mars crab. Now, this is it magnified so let's look in a little closer at the crab as I said all of this stuff is the layers of skin and tissue and flesh and muscle and the red is the eroding bloody cells that pile up as powder all over Mars because it is the red dead planet so let's now look at this which is actually an artery and a vein and they penetrate in to service this with the red blood and to remove the bl blue blood, which is, it turns black in, in uh, mud fossils. Now, you can see the artery is larger than the return vein. It has got the red of the ferrous oxide O3 variety, which has the extra oxygen. It always turns powdery. It does not harden up like the FeO2 which is the um, black blood. Arteries have little, little crab legs coming out of them, and they go into the tissues to bring that oxygenated blood into those tissues. That is what arteries do. There is no restrictions to an artery. It pumps blood down there, and it squirts in every one of these little tubes into all of the surrounding tissue. It makes its way through until it eventually gets to where it's, it, it's used up the extra oxygen and then the vein takes over. The vein has none of these legs because the vein sucks up from really almost one big central vacuum cleaner like thing. And it, I believe it's like the black holes of planets and so forth, and it might be the black holes of the universe too, because the universe is alive as far as I'm concerned. Our planet is just as alive once, and it is dying now. It's just a fact, it's dying now, it's being killed. Mars was alive once, it died, I don't know the reason it died, but it died. There is no magnetic field anymore, there's no life that anybody can really see. And I see death everywhere I look on Mars. They have all the little balls like, like I'm showing you in that webbing, but they have them also in fields of balls, just like I showed you here on this globe. So that's what that is. These are the same kind of balls that are on Mars. They are from tendon enthesis after the um, abrupt transition break and the uh, stalks deteriorate, which are less totally different material than the balls which are extremely hard and right here on earth we had the same situation once this gets so destroyed and and dead and never has any moisture whatsoever this will all become powdery and you'll see all the same stripes and you're already starting to see them and you see this this right here I'm going to show you something what that actually is okay there's some more of the same stuff 
And that's the source of these biological features we see. You have to be able to open your eyes big enough to understand what you're looking at. This is a fact. It's always written by, in history that the earth was made out of the titans and all this, and everybody laughed and thought it was silly. Well, it's not very silly. And it's extremely important to understand the significance. In my mind, you may not see it as any significance. Fine. But on this globe, I see it as significant. All right, this goes back to 2015. I did um, the work on 67P and discovered it was a tendinentesis point. And now NASA agrees that it's 100% organic, absolutely nothing like they thought it was going to be. And when they see all of the jets shooting out, they shoot right out of here like this. And the reason is the sunlight is going into the blood vessels and cooking them and burning out. And they know that the gases coming out of here are hydrocarbons. They're the exact same gases that you would give off if you were cooking meat and you didn't have enough oxygen. <laughs> it's just a fact. NASA agrees with it. So, you know, it's time to start opening your eyes and see what's really in front of your own eyes, looking from globe Earth out into space, using the satellites and all of the things that we have at our disposal. So, globe Earth Rogers signing off. All right, this is the tendon mats that are inside of ligaments and they form the muscle around your body and so forth. And they anchor these balls into tissue below. That's the ball right there that we're talking about. And these are the straps that go down to them. They go through what's called a Chinese finger trap. And that is what allows this to be anchored to that and still be able to slip back and forth. That gives you the ability to move. These are the things that they're finding, these balls and these straps and the tissue around it, because there would be other tissues. It's, this is, doesn't sit in a vacuum in a big hole in, inside of you. There's there's, you know, blood and so forth that would accumulate here. It is the matrix that these sit in and form these gushy little plates that can move back and forth. And that is what gives you the ability. It's, 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 um, it gives you the ability for all your, your fascia in your whole body to connect together and work as a unit. And these are the things that we're finding, and those are the balls. And there's a specific chemistry to them, and I'm very familiar with what it is. And by the way, these are what they use to make the walls in South America. They cut these little straps right off. That's why they had the bumps. And then they would cut this, and then they'd take these when they were wet and turn them into walls. You go look at South America, that's what they are. Here's that same tendon ball. The mat has eroded away, exposing the the ball itself where it would have been in a socket. There's one here, there's one here, there's one here. They're all over the place. That was the strap and that is the abrupt transition. It just never broke off because of the particular way it is laying over the top like that. It, it's structurally supported itself but that will go and it is ready to go I'm going to tell you at any time. Okay my fellow friends Roger Getting ready to sign off from Mud Fossil <laughs> University, planet Earth. The most magnificent globe in the solar system that I am aware of. Anyway, it's always a pleasure communicating with my fellow citizens. <laughs> I hope you got something out of this today. <laughs> uh, I know what's coming. <laughs> All right. Mars is what it is. There's comets in space. I love seeing the comets in space from the rovers and the landers. <laughs> it's amazing. Comet 67P was alive at one time and now is a dead piece of meat in space. That's a fact. I have a video about it. Hold on one second, I'll show you.